Speedy Petey. There's really nothing bad to say about your New York Rangers right now. They're playing great hockey, getting great goaltending. Galan is really have them working on every bit of the piston of their engine because uh, they're moving on so much force, timely goals. They won that game against Buffalo with three or four seconds left of the game, playing fantastic hockey, team hockey. What Ranger fans have been craving for years, how do you see this team moving forward? This team has impressed me in a lot of different ways where you're getting new players contributing. And that's why Gallant was brought there. He did it with Vegas with an expansion team right away. And while nobody should expect the Rangers to be that kind of like fluke uprising the way Vegas went to the Stanley Cup the first year, you know Gallant is good at working with different types of players. And the team is definitely more physical. You're seeing a lot of these third and fourth line depth guys step up this year. And even defensively too, newer guys emerging. We've seen a better year this year from Ryan Lindgren. Uh, Keandre Miller's definitely look better. And even the forwards defensively, I think have looked better as a whole. And that's a big difference of why the Rangers are better defensively. I'm not saying they're world-class. I'm not saying they're top 10 or anything like that because they're still allowing a lot of shots on goal. But when Igor Shosturkin has played, he's been fantastic as well, where the Rangers, I think as well, could trust those guys to do that because of how well Shosturkin has played. Now, when Georgiev plays, it hasn't been the same. He's had a rough year so far. And the Rangers might have to consider uh, going back to King or something like that. The Rangers have no need for it right now. They're still winning right now. And the top line guys, Panarin's starting to score some goals. He had a great goal against the Bruins on Black Friday. We're seeing Kreider still having a great season. 15 goals in 19 games to start the year. And that's a good sign, even for the top guys too. So Gallant's doing a lot of different things. But I think the, the physicality and the defense with forwards, I think are the biggest keys for that. Also, the Rangers are winning at home, something that they had problems with last year. Uh, 5-1-1, one, and one. they're playing great hockey. Like you were saying, Speedy, uh, they're getting timely goals. Goal scoring is up right now with 60 goals. Uh, their goals against 54. And then you look at the Islanders, and you step back and you think, this team was a Stanley Cup competitive team. A lot of people picked the Islanders to win the Stanley Cup this I did. year. I did. I did. Uh, so did I. And right now, they're one of the worst teams in the NHL. I mean, 17 games, 5-10. and 10, They have a losing record. One of very few teams have a losing record in the NHL. The first 14 games did not have a home game. In their first four home games, they're 0-4. This could be the first team in NHL history to start off at home, losing four of their first games at home. It's crazy where this team is at right now. But with the COVID-19 situation, they have like eight guys with COVID-19, bringing up some of the young players. Uh, Salo has looked good. Aho has looked good in certain aspects. But then losing Pulak for, for six weeks with the injury that he has. Defensively, they haven't looked good. Offensively, they can't put the puck in the net. I mean, they have 32 goals in 17 games. They've been shut out quite a few times in their last couple of games. They can't put the puck in the net. And this is a huge problem because we have been saying this. Where are they going to get the offense moving forward? I mean, we expected them to make a big move to add with Barzell, an offensive talent, to give them that aggressive push offensively on the first line. They didn't make it. And, and and I think it's a huge mistake not bringing Tarasenko in the offseason. Now, uh, they could bring Tarasenko at the trade deadline. I can't see St. Louis right now trading him. He's playing good hockey right now. As he gets better, as he plays better, it's going to be more to trade away to bring in a Tarasenko. He does want out uh, with St. Louis. And right now, when, where you look at the big picture with the Islanders, Speedy, the strength is their defense, and their defense is just no good right now. Yeah, and I think the bigger problem, too, is you're having all the young guys defensively trying to start in roles they're not used to as much. I noticed in particular in the game against the Rangers when – a lot of their youngsters were playing either Salo playing the second line or the second pairing and then Dobson being upgraded to the first. They just, they just didn't seem comfortable with it yet. Like they're used to it. Like they have the set roles with Pulak and Pelik being the number one defensive pair. And I think moving other guys in, they just really didn't look comfortable against the Rangers top six. And even some of the games against the Flames who have a good top six as well. Toronto, obviously we know how much talent they have. It's just tough to throw them in right away. And those younger guys just don't seem comfortable. And you mentioned Chara as well. He's looked old. He's 44 years old and he's kind of looked it so far and he's had to play because all these other guys are out and maybe the young guys have to start playing his minutes or limiting the minutes, something like that to make it work in terms of the offense. They might need to actually go with a different option. Yeah. You brought up Tarasenko and he might still want out of St. Louis. I can still believe that. And I think St. Louis believes that if they can get the good offer, they're still going to trade him anyway, because the blues have won games without him in the past with all these injuries too. He's, 
he's played well to himself this year, but the Blues aren't winning just solely because of him. They're bouncing back because of the goaltending and the defense getting better, more stuff like that. But I think the Islanders, maybe the better option for them might be getting two guys, two younger guys that might not be as costly. Brock Besser from Vancouver is one that was mentioned, and they're having a rough start to the year. The Coyotes have a couple young players that they can consider that are good offensive players. They might need to get multiple rather than just trying to swing for one guy just to fill out that top six a little better because they have the center depth for sure. Sure. They have guys that would face offs. Obviously, Barzell's a tremendous playmaker, but they might need a couple wingers to really compensate for that rather than just trying to swing for one. Tarasenko is seeking a trade um, yeah. out of St. Louis. Uh, I mean, everybody says it's still uncertain what he wants to do, but then another article came out that he still wants to be traded. So he is probably going to get traded. He has two years left on his contract worth about five and a half million. It's a pretty good contract uh, to bring in uh, a talent that, uh, that good. I think that the Islanders, if they bring in somebody like a Tarasenko, that can absolutely solidify their first line. Andrews Lee has not had a good season coming back from the injury that he has. Barzell is not scoring goals, which is, it affects the whole offense and really the speed of this team. So I am not surprised right now of the way the Islanders have played. But I'm also very surprised with the injuries that are just falling and COVID bug that's affecting them. It it really has hurt them. I was very surprised, Speedy. The NHL allowed that Ranger game. I thought they were going to cancel that game with the COVID situation that they have right now and with, uh, what, six or seven players out. But the NHL did not want to do that. And I think it's affecting the Islanders right now. They're not 100% healthy. They're not playing good team hockey. Uh, They haven't had the full team on the ice really until the first Really weak of hockey. Pulak got hurt after the first week. He's been out ever since the second week of hockey. This offense is not clicking because Brock Nelson's out. Bailey's out. This guy's out. That guy's out. Wait, uh, yeah. You know, they, they can't stay healthy. And it's a huge problem right now. And Paul Mary, who I thought was going to be a good signing, has really done nothing this year so far. They need to wake him up. The offense needs to wake up. Barry Trotz needs to open up his offense. If there's anybody that can do this, It's Barry Trotz. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, the Islanders are in trouble because they do have the best coach in the NHL. If there's somebody that can figure out where they're going to find offense or where they're going to figure out when they get healthy, where they're going to be able to put the puck in the net, I think it's going to be him. Now, like you said, Speed, they need to add multiple offensive players to this team because they're just not getting the offense that they need. If you look at the Rangers, they're getting offense from everybody. They're young players. The players that you wouldn't think that you were going to get offense from, they're getting offense from. They're playing good all-around team hockey play. And I want to see that from the Islanders. You talk about the depth that they had defensively. They have depth, and you can see it with Salo. Salo is going to be a good player. Ajo could be a good player, a trade piece for the Islanders moving forward. Especially now with other teams struggling that weren't supposed to struggle to in the Eastern Conference as well. Lou Lamorello, we've seen him trade with other Eastern Conference teams. So I think the Islanders still are going to seek that aggression in comparison to some other borderline teams that might be afraid to make that kind of move. We've seen Lamorello trade with the Leafs, the Devils. The team's in division. Them and the Penguins, a lot of former players from there, too. So I, I think they still have an advantage when it comes to that in that front where Lamorello is going to make those kinds of moves, too. And even in the Western Conference, too, we've seen a lot of disappointing teams this year to start the season. The Pacific Division's had a couple of them. Again, even a team like the Vancouver, a, a team that two years ago took Vegas to seven games in the Hub City playoffs, and now all of a sudden they're struggling. Brock Besser, I don't know if they'll trade Elias Pettersson. Arizona, another young team that's starting to make a leap. They could get somebody from there. Or even a veteran like Phil Kessel maybe is another option for them as a sniper. So they have options too, definitely, to get multiple now because I think the depth is more important at this point. They need offense. They're not scoring enough. They got shut out by the Penguins the other day. Jari, if Jari is shutting you out, there's a problem. Yeah. They scored one goal against the Rangers. You can't win scoring one goal a game or getting shut out. In the last four games, I think the Islanders have been shut out twice. You can't be an NHL team if you can't put the puck in the net. And it's a huge problem. You can't blame the goalie Sorokin. Sorokin's played as well as you can possibly play as a goalie. And Vlamov has looked horrible. Horrible. So we know who their goaltender is in the future. Starting most of the games this year, it's not going to be Vlamov. It is going to be Sorokin. And right now, if you look at Sorokin's record, 5-6, and six, his goals against Howard's is really, really good, 2.42. His save percentage, 0.928, is really, really good. 13 games, but he's 5-6, and six, and he has two ties. It's not his fault that the team isn't winning. They're not scoring goals in front of him. If they're not scoring goals for him, 
they're not going to win. Sesterkin's goals against average is almost the same. Sesterkin's team is is giving him the points and the goals in front of him that's helping him win these games and giving him the opportunity to win these games. But I just think it's horrible what we see right now for the Islanders. Yeah, he's faced already this year individually 415 shots, made 385 saves. So that's almost, I would say, 36 shots a game mm-hmm. on average. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. It's been horrible. And, and when you look at Sesterkin, he has a 2.22 Goals against average, which is only 22 over yeah. working, and a .933 save percentage, which is only like, what, five-tenths of a point from Sorokin's save percentage. So you see what Sorokin is doing. He's keeping his team in the games, but you can't win if you can't score. And that's a huge problem moving forward for the Islanders. Hopefully, Lou Lamorello and Barry Trotz has this figured out because you cannot move forward and expect to keep falling out and losing a ninth game or a tenth or a twelfth game in a row and expect that this team is going to make the playoffs.